Hello. I'm going to take you to uh, the test, all right, and um, Mexican American history, uh, test number one, all right. So, considering 19th century criteria for civilized status, what would have impressed the Europeans? Um, so, remember, uh, you know, take a look at C manipulation of the environment by a complex society engaged in the arts and sciences. That, cer that certainly would have. With number two, I mentioned uh, Charles C. Mann's thesis in number um, two of the Black Legend uh, or of the Native Americans that they uh, they were able to fit the European criteria for, quote, civilized status uh, pretty darn independently without help from others being surrounded by two oceans. Um, the Olmec, yes, were, uh, I went the old narrative of them being uh, considered the mother culture, okay, using this European criteria, of course. Um, the Maya and the Aztec, uh, we, you see in number two of the, uh, with the Native Americans uh, and with the Black legend that they indeed uh, demonstrated great knowledge in astronomy, architecture, religion, literature, folklore, etc. Um, I mentioned uh, in lecture uh, about this topic that ironically, the first area uh, that is still considered in the popular narrative, the chronologically first place for uh, civilization, if you will, and I put that in quotes because that's European European criteria being used, it's subjective, uh, was developed in the, the dry arid Southwest, right? Uh, particularly in New Mexico. So we mentioned some of those places uh, and they were generically called the Pueblo, the, the Hohokam and the Anasazi, et cetera. Pueblo Bonito, Chaco Canyon, et cetera. Uh, just incredible places with their architecture, uh, architecture was aligned with astronomy. They had an observatory. Uh, they had a writing system. Uh, they had the uh, structures that housed uh, hundreds, if not more, people uh, within one building and um, had some connections with Mesoamerica. All right. So let's see here. And then which of the following is false regarding the Spanish sources written in the 1500s? Well, you should be familiar with the first two. Um, Las Casas, right, uh, definitely tried to defend the Native Americans. He was their uh, advocate uh, before the Spanish crown. Castillo, remember he said he was writing La Historia Verdadera, the, the true, real history, uh, as against Las Casas' book and Salgun's book, um, and tried to give it more of a Spanish uh, perspective. And then Salgun um, had great empathy uh, for the for the Aztec, not only in that they lost, not only in wanting to preserve their culture through their codices, uh, but also uh, in the midst of, uh, of human sacrifice. Uh, he felt that it was not their fault, uh, that they were blinded by the devil, and they needed to uh, paternally, uh, non-coercively uh, be converted to Catholic Christianity. All right. Uh, the Black Legend with Christopher Columbus, uh, that was pretty clear. Uh, hopefully you read that if you didn't choose that one on the Black Legend. Uh, but remember, it contends that it, was, it blames the system much larger than Columbus that almost made him have to um, harden his heart and be willing to play the game, right? Speaking of that system, right, uh, you see uh, option B with number eight, a barbaric quasi almost capitalist system opening up amongst European kingdoms in the early modern era. And it did promote a degree of ruthlessness and violence by by um, rewarding such, right? And we've gone over that. And um, the, the Renaissance uh, gave a sense of cosmopolitanism, a desire to see the world uh, and uh, finish things with cartography, with map making, and uh, connect uh, to commercial markets, et cetera, and then some. And then the Adelantados, those who went Adelante, who came forward to claim pagan land, uh, like Columbus, claimed that they were heading for the Asian markets uh, and hitting the Caribbean. So let's see here. With number nine, it should be easy. The last number on the um, on the Black Legend uh, is, is either the Black Legend or the Spaniards, uh, but it's one of them. Uh, talking about the two ironies. 
Uh, number nine should be very easy. Um, the Spaniards have an especial path uh, that is oftentimes tied uh, to both Rome and the Umayyad Caliphate, uh, their uh, territorial takeover of uh, old Iberia or Spania. Um, but on this one with, with Rome, right, um, she was not alone in the midst of her European neighbors, right? Gaul right next to her, up above her, uh, connected to her, France. Uh, Gaul was taken uh, by Rome. Um, and so clearly that kind of singles that one out. And I didn't stress that part of Spain that was uh, a part of the Black Legend. We're going, we're going to uh, shortly. But going back to the Umayyad Caliphate, it talks about the subjugation, um, uh, the uh, yeah, fighting a holy war, uh, et cetera. That's the one that you want to look to uh, as far as being tied to Spain, having a special path into becoming the anti-model uh, colonizer in the early modern era. A Rome could be beckoned to recall institutions and traditions of which Western civilization is proud, which characteristics were tied in class to an historiographical tendency to link Roman influence to negative Spanish traits. And look at B, an imperial bureaucracy, an elite hierarchy rewarding conquest, patriarchy, and an alleged dangerously close union of church and state. Okay, from the later Roman Empire at the fall of the Republic. Uh, let's see here, number 12. Um, which of these things were deemed to be original? Uh, if you look again at the two ironies of Spain, you could get that one. You could get that one. That one should be pretty easy. Um, what was emphasized by the instructor as possibly significant about Visigoth rule is they perpetuated things Roman. Uh, the the constitution mainly, also language, uh, official traditions, etc. So yeah, that would definitely be it. And then I, as I often do, took I tried to take a middle course in the Reconquista as far as being relevant context to the Conquista of the Americas, saying that absolutely there is some um, relevance, uh, relevant impact to the, the Spanish reconquering of the Spanish Iberian Peninsula from the Muslim Moors and, and Arabic Moors. Um, but it sometimes can be exaggerated on account of its length, it, it, its duration. You know, it's 711 to 1492. They were not constantly at war. They coexisted amidst many um, time periods with many uh, rulers, etc. Number 15, the Renaissance was tied to the conquista in class and that it fostered pursuit of knowledge, cosmopolitanism, being a citizen, citizen of the world, pursuit of personal glory, nautical inventions, and a more readily available system of credit for adventures. Absolutely. And then the awkward, awkward juxtaposition that I intended to convey was the sense of deference that these conquerors uh, demonstrated in letters back to Ferdinand, etc., and Isabella, but also a sense, a little bit, a sense of entitlement, uh, knowing that they had made it, they survived, and they were entitled to their um, their spoils of war, uh, according to this opening of mercantilist restrictions back in Europe and beginning this rat race here into the Americas. All right, 17, you know, 18, you know, um, number 19, famous portrayals, a portrayal of Aztec fatalism, especially regarding the alleged prophecy about Quetzalcoatl. Uh, there is such a vilification of the Spanish as ungrateful, deceitful, and masterful in the divide and conquer tactics. Absolutely. Uh, I would argue that that is Sagun's book, uh, the one called Broken Spears. Uh, great man drama between Cortez and Moctezuma. Yes. Systematic genocide attempts by Spain via deliberately spreading smallpox. That's a little much. I had to put a false one in there. So notice on some of them, like 19, you're looking for the wrong one, ironically. Number 20, you should know it's right. It, it literally is the first uh, Black Legend section. And it, it's the thesis. Um, hmm.
Yeah, I talked about the Black Legend 21. I feel good about that. H.J. Elliott. I don't know how much I did with him. And I'm wondering if it's J.H. Elliott. I always get confused, even though I have his books right here. At any rate, I'll fix that in time if, if, if I'm wrong, if it's J.H. Uh, contends that English colonization was intended to afford much more power and more opportunities to the common folk than Spanish colonizers ever intended. Hmm. Spanish colonizers had to improvise and contend with unseen forces in maintaining hierarchical control in the Americas, like rebellious conquistadors, conquistadores, and miscegenation. The Black legend is completely unfounded, hence without factual support. No, he goes for the Black legend in his books, but he also shows a very nuanced look. And the one that he uh, harped upon uh, from his famous book is uh, this one right here, the Spanish improvisation in dealing with rebellious conquistadors and with miscegenation. All right. Although challenged centuries later, the image of Junipero Serra has been one of a benevolent patriarch reminiscent of Spanish court histories of the missions. Absolutely. I hope that I qualified that enough for that to be considered true uh, to you as well. The Children of Coyote iconoclastically bashes the Spanish friars as violent ethnocentric despots. No, it's not. That'd be conflict history coming from the civil rights movement. Uh, this was written later. This is kind of functional history, like seeing how we got to where we are, not really making villains and, and, and victims of any demographics, uh, but just going over inadvertent damage. Uh, done by the Europeans that they didn't perhaps intend to, to to carry out. Then when Jesus came, the corn mothers went away. I talked about this. This is an almost Marxist depiction that everything is about economics and power. It was about psychological domination um, between colonizers and colonized in, in New Mexico. Pedro de Valdivia, I have him mentioned uh, in that section of the black legend, uh, number one. So you should get that. Francisco de Coronado and Cabrillo are historically tied to Spanish claims to the North American far west, yes. Uh, de Soto, that history has not been kind to him, but he claimed the, the southeast of the country, yes. De Juan de Oñate, that's the New Mexico guy, the first governor. So would he be warmly addressed by Ramon Gutierrez in his book? When Jesus came, the corn mothers went away. Of course not. He's he's the original villain. Okay. Number 30, you should know from the last assignment, just the very latest assignment that you've done. And then I have 31 on there as well. Thirty-two. The Spanish actually had charts made classifying and, and uh, placing products of certain ethnic combinations in specific levels of social and political pyramids. Yes. Uh, communities of Indios in large numbers with their own caciques were often encouraged to stay segregated within their own villages or barrios, as it especially facilitated the repartimiento. That is true. Spanish kings and queens were not above issuing limpieza de sangre, right? Cleanness of blood certificates, trying um, statutes, trying to limit certain opportunities, positions of power and privileges uh, to peninsular Spaniards. That last part doesn't make sense. But it has to be because the last one is wrong. Spanish kings and queens were not above issuing limpieza de sangre statutes, trying to limit certain opportunities, positions of power, privileges. I'm going to change the second half of this, okay? But note, okay, on number 32, it's not C. I intend C to be correct because D is clearly the one that should not be in there that's wrong. Even if earning enough money to pay their market price, Negro slaves were seldom allowed to gain manumission. That is absolutely false. I'm going to change the ending of this. 
I don't know what I was trying to convey. It makes no sense to me right now. But the answer is not C. The answer is D. All right. So knowing the truth of D on 32 gives you the answer to 33. There were opportunities for slaves to get their manumission in Latin America much more easily than under the British and under the English. Um, so why was the Catholic Church, you know, really strong? The Patronato gave her intimacy with the crown. That is true. She was granted much, much land. She, in places, was nearly the sole facilitator of education and of credit or loans. That's all true. All right, 35 is that uh, the missions were a mixed bag section. You, you could easily get that right out of that, okay? 36, that last one you did on the English should be very easy. Thirty seven A is true. B is true. No system of accountability existed. No. C doesn't fit. That's the one that's false. There was a system of accountability. Remember the visitor general and the Juez de Residencia? All right. Thirty eight, you should know. And then from uh, the last one about the Puritans, uh, you should know that one, okay? Thirty-nine and forty are from the last assignment that you've done. All right, so I hope I've helped you uh, uh, somewhat. And notice, I didn't want to go over and give every single one. To me, it's just I have the energy to do it. I certainly want you to do well. But it just feels condescending. Like you guys are smart. Um, I, I don't need to give you every answer on my written tests. Uh, so I'll probably give you even less, perhaps, on subsequent tests than I did today. Uh, but I just want to make sure that um, I want everybody to do well on the first test uh, while you're getting a, a grasp of getting accustomed to my style of test writing. Okay. So good luck, everybody. I hope you do well. All right. Take care.